In this video, we are going to wrap up our discussion on chapter 34 uh, and the Federal Reserve by talking about the role of the Fed as the lender of last resort. Uh, before we uh, dive into all of that, uh, there's two things that I want us to, to talk about first. All right. um, the first one, or it's really they're, they're um, connected concepts. All right, but the first one is illiquid institutions, or just more generally illiquidity. All right, uh, so uh, an illiquid institution is an institution with greater short term liabilities than short term assets. That's not how you spell that. Oh, yes it is. But overall greater assets than liabilities. So uh, that is what is known as an illiquid institution. All right, uh, to boil this down a little bit, um, what we're essentially saying is um, if, well, let me not stand in front of the definition. Um, uh, so what we're saying kind of uh, in, in layman's terms is the bank is, you know, somebody's coming to get their, their money and the bank is saying, hey, I have your money but not today, right? Um, again, you know, that's, they wouldn't do that one-on-one -on -one with, with people, but that is the idea, right? I've got, I've got the money, I've got, I can pay you back, right? But it's, that, that money is tied up right now, all right? Um, uh, it's, it's been, I've, I've, you know, lent it to, loaned, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I really need to look that up. Um, I, I, it's, it's been loaned out to other people, all right, once they pay me back, I can pay you back, all right? That's essentially what an illiquid institution is, all right? Uh, so liquid, all right, um, we know a liquid asset is one that can be used for payment or quickly uh, changed, um, you know, without a loss of value, so, so on and so forth, all right? And that's the exact same thing, all right? You've got the assets, they're just not liquid, all right? Uh, you know, I've, I've got the, the assets, but it's not in cash for me to, to pay you back. All right, so that's an, a, a liquid institution. All right, I want to contrast that with what's known as an insolvent institution. So an insolvent institution is an institution with liabilities that are greater than their assets. All right, so this is not short term, long term, this is just all, just, just flat out. I guess so it is, it is short term and long term, right? Uh, but the kind of the key point is that just overall, right, um, they have greater liabilities than assets, right? So this is, I can't pay you back, and even if you come back tomorrow, I still can't pay you back. All right, so the reason that we want to make this distinction is because 
when you have an illiquid bank, right, or an illiquid, an illiquid institution that will be able to cover those liabilities uh, in the long term, right, that's when the Fed can help, right, as a lender of last resort, right, um, where it, it, it's very helpful for them to do that because hey, you just need something in the short term, you know, however long the short term is, um, and then you can can pay that back. Um, but with an insolvent institution, uh, there's not a lot that can be done. Right? Um, so you know, even you know, if the if the Fed lends money to an insolvent institution, they're not going to get paid back ever. Right? Um, and so there's there's no point to doing that. Uh, speaking of insolvent institutions and really illiquid institutions, uh, kind of brings up something I, we've talked about, I think, at, at some point. Um, I don't remember if actually, well, I, don't, I know we did, but, um, but it's bank runs. That's, that's what it is. Um, doesn't matter where, which which chapter we talked about it in, All right? But uh, bank runs, right? Uh, people uh, kind of panicking, thinking, uh, you know, wanting to go and, and get their money out of a bank, uh, so on and so forth, All right? Um, that's because you know when they do this, All right? When there's a bank run, it's because there's fear that the banks are insolvent, right? That if uh, you know that they don't have the assets to cover all of the liabilities they have to their depositors. So I don't, if I don't get there first and get my money out, right, when I do come, there might not be any money left. All right, um, so with an, uh, kind of an insolvent institution, again, there's nothing that can really help. But if there is a bank run on an illiquid bank, right, that can cause a big problem, right, and that's when the Fed might want to step in. Right. It's uh, also what led to or the, the kind of these bank runs and trying to prevent um, illiquid banks or institutions from becoming insolvent right, or having to shut down because they can't get anything. Right. Uh, it's the reason for the creation of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. All right, uh, more commonly referred to as, as FDIC. All right, uh, so the FDIC, right, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, right, uh, insures the deposits uh, of its kind of of the the deposits for their mem institutions that are a member of the FDIC, right, up to two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars for I think, I think you can have that in a checking and a savings account, and there might be one more. I've forgotten, though. I uh, probably should uh, have written that down. All right, uh, but uh, I know for you to have savings account and, uh, say, a checking, a checking account, and if you have $250,000 in those accounts, then uh, it is insured if the bank ever went under. All right. Um, Honestly, most banks are FDIC. If you're banking with one that is not FDIC, you might want to get a different bank um, because, I mean, I'd like to have that insurance, right? Um, there's one more thing. Oh, also, if any of you are ever, you know, fortunate enough to currently have or in the future to have um, a an account with more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in it, uh, you should take anything above that and go open another account. In a different bank because anything above that not insured, right? So if you have a million dollars um, and you put it all in one savings account and then that gets wiped out, you're only going to get two hundred fifty thousand dollars back. So um, you want to go and put that in, spread it around a little bit. All right. Uh, so that was the kind of FDIC. Um, let's kind of jump back to talking about these. Uh, this this idea that the Fed is the lender of last resort, All right? So sometimes um, and this is something that happened in during the the recession, right? Um, the the Fed was 
loaning money out uh, to some of these big financial institution, institutions and one of the reasons that happened so is why didn't they just let you know these banks fail why did um, the government uh, lend them this money All right uh, and the reason for that is what's known as systemic risk All right, so this is the risk that the failure of one financial institution can bring down other institutions. All right, so um, with this systemic risk, all right, uh, the reason why there is a, a fear of this um, is because, especially in these financial institutions, they are uh, often extremely interconnected, all right? Um, if you've watched any of the movies about the financial crisis, the, the big short, I'm, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head, all right, but there are, there are other ones, all right? Um, if you listen to them explaining what um, these things are that they're they're buying, um, it's 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 pretty pretty crazy, right? So um, one of the big things then was subprime mortgages, all right? So a subprime mortgage uh, is essentially just giving a, a mortgage, right? Giving a uh, home loan to somebody that would not normally qualify for it, right? For whatever reason, right? Um, so, uh, kind of during the, the housing bubble, right? Uh, they were just kind of giving out these subprime mor mortgages, all right? You, you didn't really have to, you didn't have to put, well, uh, I don't know um, all the details, but they were just giving them away, right? Um, so they would take all of these mortgages, all right? They would put them together, right? Um, however many, I don't know, we'll just say 100, right? They, they might put uh, 100 of them together, right? And then sell them to somebody else, right? Then that might get chopped up, combined with something else, sold to a different bank. They might do something else with it, sell it to another bank, right? And so by the time you finish, right, all of these banks are kind of connected. And if this one, if, if a bunch of these types of assets, right, go down, right, then that could, could bring them all down, right? Or rather that, you know, if, if one company went down, right, well, they, you know, owed money to uh, this other bank, right, um, and, and this other bank and so on and so forth, that if, that bank goes down, that's going to destroy the other banks, the other financial institutions, right? So to avoid that, the Fed, right, did what, you know, is, is colloquial or commonly referred to as uh, the bailout, right? Um, where they went in there and were lending uh, money to these, these financial institutions to keep them, right, uh, especially the big ones that uh, could could potentially bring down a lot of other ones. All right, um, one reason people are we are weary, leery is what I meant to say, leery of this uh, is what's known as moral hazard. All right, so this is the um, let's see, what's the the best word? Um, the tendency, that's what I was looking for, to take on more risk uh, when the uh, when you are insured, right? Um, that's just that's that's usually how I think of it. Um, they're not really, so the insurance in this case is 
the the government's going to come in and lend us money so we can so we can make these risky investments we can do these risky deals and still all right still be okay all right um one of my favorite uh, examples of this and again this isn't um uh, an insured well one uh uh, having to do since I said insured right um, and insurance uh, one thing for um, the kind of the healthcare se sector right uh, one of the multitude of reasons that uh, healthcare is so expensive uh, is partially a moral hazard right one uh, if you have insurance the costs of so it can really say when when the costs are lowered actually I'm going to change it to that All right, uh, so get kind of back to this uh, little example. All right, um, because we don't have to pay the full amount. If you have insurance, you go, you you know, you pay your copay or whatever. You don't have to pay the full amount. So uh, one result of that is that we tend to go to the doctor more often um, than we perhaps necessarily need to. All right. Um, uh, because again that that cost is lowered so we're gonna do this activity more often right uh, the risk part doesn't necessarily apply to this one right um, another example is that uh, when the seat belt right was introduced and seat belts became kind of m mandatory in vehicles right uh, the number of fatalities due to collisions uh, went down, right? So seatbelts were saving lives, right? But the number of collisions, right, actually went up, right? So people were driving more dangerously, more recklessly, taking on greater amounts of risk because they knew that if they did get into a car wreck, they are much less likely to die because they're wearing a seatbelt. Right. Um, if you were to kind of go the other way with it and say, uh, put a giant spike on the the steering wheel, right? Um, people would probably drive a lot more safely, right? Um, if if you you know, if if stopping short is going to cause you to be impaled um, on your own car, right? You're probably going to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more um, ginger about driving, right? Um, and so again, the, the argument here is that by kind of uh, doing the, the bailout, right, um, you are kind of presenting a moral hazard again to these companies, all right, so that they think, well, you know, if, you know, they're not going to let us fail, right, uh, kind of that, the too big to fail idea, right. Um, they're not going to let us fail because if we fail, that's going to be really bad for the rest of the economy as well. So, right, we can just kind of do whatever we want, right? Uh, so that's, I mean, that's, I'm sure that's not really what exactly what they're thinking. But also, most people don't think, hey, I'm going to get into that moral hazard, right? They just, they just do it. Um, you're, you know, when you put on your seatbelt, you're not thinking, hey, this means I can drive like a maniac. You just kind of do it. All right, um, but uh, that is it. So again, um, that's something that the Fed has to, to, to worry about, right? So both systemic risk, right? When is it going to be worth it to kind of go in, step in, and uh, lend to uh, these financial institutions, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, what's the risk of you know creating this moral hazard? All right, uh, but that's it for this chapter. Uh, in the next chapter, we will look at how the Fed uses this, uh, kind of all of this stuff um, to kind of uh, manipulate the macroeconomy. All right, uh, but I will see you in the next chapter.